Hello everyone, this is Johnny and welcome back. In today's video, I want to discuss successfully growing Japanese maples in pots uh, for longer term periods of time. And thankfully, Japanese maples are a great tree that can be grown in pots for really indefinite periods of time as long as you take care of those trees. And especially the dwarf varieties, but even the larger varieties, um, if you keep them pruned and properly taken care of, you can grow those in pots. So let's discuss some basic tips based on research and also personal experience to help you better take care of your potted Japanese maple trees. Okay, one of the first topics when it comes to taking good care of your Japanese maple uh, tree in a pot comes down to what kind of potting soil or what kind of soil to use for that tree. This is a question that I get um, decently often in the comments section of my videos and it's something that I wanna cover specifically in this video more in depth. So I personally have had good luck with G&B Organics potting soil. Um, obviously um, other brands would work well, um, but I wanna mention some basic things to look for in your potting soil. First of all, Japanese maple trees, according to my research, prefer a slightly acidic soil. Somewhere with a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 seems to be kind of the ideal number for Japanese maple trees. Now, I personally don't fiddle with the pH of my potting soil. I just go with this GNB Organic blend and it's done well for me. But I did go on the manufacturer's website for this product. And according to that site, um, this product has a pH of between 5.8 and 7.5. So I believe probably more often than not, the soil is somewhere in between there. So that pH naturally seems to be a good a number for Japanese maples. So if you have GMB Organics potting soil in your area, or I believe they also sell it under the Kellogg brand, that might be something to look for. Otherwise, just try to find a, a soil that has a pH um, in, somewhere in that normal range. And also just kind of uh, realize that soil will change pH with time. But initially, if you start out at the right number, that's going to be helpful. Um, now, when it comes to other important things for soil, you wanna make sure that it's very um, drainable. So you can see here, and I'll show you watering a little later on in the video, um, but as you can see, here's the back side of this Orangeola Japanese maple. Um, and you can see there's some good moisture in the soil. And this, I believe, is the GMB Organics in here. Uh, I potted this up earlier this year. Um, to make sure that it had a good sized pot. And this is the pot it will live in for probably in the next couple years. And I may go one size up from this. And I'll talk about potting up shortly um, when it comes to sizing. Um, but you wanna make sure that when you water this, the water drains quickly through it. It didn't just sit on the top. Um, and you also wanna make sure that your drainage holes, and we'll talk about this later on as well, but you wanna make sure that your drainage holes um, are not plugged up. Since this was newly potted up earlier this season, we're obviously still good with this one. Um, but you wanna make sure that this drains well. That's an important thing for soils. But in general, a good quality potting soil, I prefer organic products. So I often will use organic products like this. Uh, a good quality potting soil like this with a pH level, that's somewhere within that range, I believe will be good. You could invest in a pH meter of some kind, and I will link to one that I'm considering purchasing on Amazon um, that might be helpful if you wanna really fiddle with this. But once again, I've had um, good experience with this particular product, and it's done well for me. I do wanna mention one particular product that I picked up at a local store that has been very helpful for me. And uh, this might be available on Amazon, so if it's available, I'll link to that with an affiliate link. And once again, um, when I put links down below for products that I use or similar products that I use, when you purchase using those Amazon links, it does help support this channel. Amazon pays me a commission off of that purchase um, at no extra cost to you. So if you want to uh, see some of the products I talk about in this video, um, whatever's available, either similar or exact product, I will link to below with Amazon affiliate links. But this particular scoop is normally made for like animal feed, things like that. But it works really well uh, at scooping soil. And so you can see here, um, one or two big scoops of this really go a long way for filling up a pot. And uh, I've had really good experience with this, both, both for mulch in the garden and for soils. It's been a really handy tool. So this is something I definitely recommend that you pick up if you're gonna do a decent amount of potting. Um, no matter the size, it's really pretty handy. 
Okay, now let's talk about potting up Japanese maples and sizing. So I've talked about this quite a bit in the past, but I'm very aggressive when it comes to potting my Japanese maples. Um, I will take Japanese maples that are, you know, roughly one year old, um, like this, and eventually those will get potted up into either a five and a half inch square like this, which is ideal, or um, in the past I put those in gallon containers like these. Now, um, once they go from that and they, they fill out this pot with roots, then you can, of course, go up to a two gallon pot and a three gallon pot, etc. And what I recommend when trees are young, I would go ahead and pot them up, you know, roughly um, once a season up a size, as long as that tree has somewhat filled out that pot. I'm aggressive when it comes to early potting. Um, and once again, if space is a constraint, you probably don't have to do it quite as often as I do. And eventually you work up to what I have these particular trees in, like for instance, this Acer Paul made them butterfly, which I picked up this year and I just absolutely um, love this particular tree. Now, I purchased this one from a nursery um, locally here and they already had it in a big pot, which is rare. They actually had it in their specimen section. And this is already in like a, uh, I'd say like a 20 gallon nursery pot. So I believe that's good um, for now. I may go up one size next season potentially but that's a pretty good size probably for a while for this tree um, but you can see that one there and then we have i believe once again like a probably 20 25 gallon pot here this is for my amber ghost um, which you can see the summer color here um, in the spring you get kind of an amber color with this kind of an amber pink and then in the summer it turns green and you do get the highlights there in the center of the leaf which are beautiful then I also have this particular tree, once again, in about a 20, or could be once again, probably about 20. I think this is a 20 gallon pot. Um, and this particular one, I just recently purchased um, locally from someone who uh, lives in my area. And this is an Acer palmatum katsura. Um, and this particular one gets quite yellow in the spring. And in the summer, it turns into a nice small leaf green Japanese maple. It has um, nice, beautiful green bark, and uh, I like this particular tree quite a bit. Then, once again, um, this looks like this particular one is in a 25 gallon pot, so one size up from that. It's hard to tell, but it looks a little whiter. This is one of my favorite trees in my garden, um, and this is an Alpenweiss variety, and I've shown you this in the past, but this tree is. Um, in its pot, over six feet tall, so probably out of the pot, it's right around six feet tall. Um, but it just has beautiful leaves. In the spring, you get pinks that come out, and then in the summer, it's green with white. And uh, I just love this particular tree. I've had this for four years now, and I've potted it up several times. And we're now at a pot size. Um, I may go up one more pot size, but I may actually just stick with this for several years and then maybe eventually go up to like a 30 gallon pot, but probably not much larger than that. And uh, when it comes to Japanese maples, eventually you're going to hit a pot size that you just want to stick with, whether it be because you need to move it around occasionally or whether it be um, a space constraint. Whatever that be, you'll probably eventually hit a pot size that's kind of that maximum. What's going to be important is you want to make sure, first of all, as I mentioned when it comes to potting, that you keep your drainage holes clear. Now you can see there are some roots beginning to fill this one up, so I just need to watch that and make sure I don't get any big roots there um, and make sure that doesn't uh, get clogged up and make sure this is still draining well. Um, Make sure that it doesn't root to the ground. This one's still good. In the past, this has rooted to the ground just a little bit, just slightly. And you got to make sure you handle that so it doesn't get established somewhere and then really start to sing those roots down. And then what will happen is, after several years, um, a tree will get root bound. This one should, is still good. Um, from what I can tell, this one's still good. It's still got some looseness here. It's not super tight. I think it's been in this pot. I think I did this uh, last year, spring of last year. I put this in this 25, number 25 pot. Um, but in a few years, next season, maybe the following season, I'll start checking this and make sure it's not root bound. And I might have to go in and trim the roots a little bit. Once you get to a pot size that you're happy with, you might have to prune those roots to make sure it doesn't get root bound. And that's a good time to put some brand new fresh soil in that pot. Um, 
But Japanese maples, once again, even this beautiful Alpenweiss, it can be very happy in a pot as long as you take care of it. And uh, when it comes to watering the tree, I think it's a good time to go ahead and transition to watering. Watering is going to be, um, seems really basic, but it is important to talk about as well. So let's now talk about watering Japanese maple trees from small to larger specimens like this one. Okay, so we're back to this Orangiola variety here. I'm on the back side. And um, when it comes to watering, you can see there's still a little bit of moisture in the soil. So this wouldn't absolutely need to be watered, but I don't like to let these completely dry out. During the summer months when it's pretty warm, and it's a decent warm day today, decently warm day today, um, I like to go ahead and water these usually every couple days. Now, first of all, you wanna make sure that when you water, you give it a good soak. You don't just give it a little bit on the top and then uh, move on. You wanna give this a pretty good soak. And uh, notice here that the water is not just pooling on top. The water is pretty much immediately going down through the pot. So I have good drainage on this tree. It's a good loose soil. Um, this once again, I believe has GMB organic potting soil. I'm pretty certain that's what I use for this particular tree. And you can see just how well that's draining. And I'm just gonna go ahead and really give that a good, nice soak. And there's not really a time that I would recommend. I would just say do it by, by feel, what feels right and if the tree is responding well. Um, but you can see there, that's probably good for a tree like this. And you can see that's soaking in really rapidly. Um, so good soil, um, it's draining quickly, and you can see a pretty good soak. I could probably get a little bit more, but that's probably good now because we're not into the like 100 degree temperatures just yet. Um, here in this is zone eight where I am located. Now, what's really important with watering is consistency. If you have a basic pattern that you like to water your trees, obviously you don't want to overwater, but with, within reason, stay with a basic pattern of watering. The tree will appreciate consistency. When it comes to watering smaller trees like this, it's really the same rules apply, um, but you don't have to add as much water. Uh, but every couple days is usually sufficient for something like this, especially if you keep them in an environment um, where they don't get direct sun, which we'll talk about location of your potted Japanese maples. But you can see that it's draining well there. Um, it's a good loose soil. This particular one is about, I would say, a three-year-old tree. Giving that some water. See, that's going down very nicely. Then, of course, you have your smaller one-year-old trees. And you don't have to give these a ton of water because these are small little pots. Just give that a quick, quick basic soak. And um, during certain parts of the year, I may have to water these daily, but at this part in the year, when it's not extremely hot, it's hot, but it's not extremely hot, once, once a day, once every two days is usually sufficient. Now, right now, I just got the tops of these wet, and this is uh, mid-afternoon. Ideally, I think the very best time I found to water Japanese maple trees, especially these small ones where the leaves kind of get a little wet when you water them, is at evening time when the sun is, the harsh sun has gone down and um, you're kind of in that golden hour when it's a, starting to cool off a little bit, generally speaking. Um, that's the best time so you don't get scorching on your leaves because if you get a little bit of water on your leaves like I have here and then that gets into some intense sun, that could potentially um, put little water spots, like burn little water spots into your tree, and that's not gonna be as pretty. So uh, watering in the evening time for these, these particular uh, small little trees is usually ideal, but I just wanna demonstrate quickly um, how much water I give these. And once again, basically every other day until it gets really extremely hot, then sometimes I give them water every day. Another important thing that you need to consider when it comes to taking care of potted Japanese maples comes down to what kind of fertilizer to use. Now, as I mentioned when I talked about potting soil, Japanese maples prefer slightly acidic soil, somewhere in a pH of 5.5 to 6.5 based on my research. I haven't fiddled with it, um, but it's good to know that in case you have problems, maybe you could check that first before you um, worry about some other things, see if the pH isn't quite right. When the pH of soil isn't quite right, if it's uh, too acidic or too alkaline, um, some of the nutrients that that tree wants to get from the soil are not able to be um, taken up into that tree. Um, and so it's important that you have the right pH for that particular tree. But 
I've mentioned this in the past. I've had good luck with this rhododendron, azalea, and camellia a fertilizer from GNB Organics. Now this is made for the, these particular um, plants, which are acid-loving plants. And it does have a little bit of humic acid in it. And I believe, let me look here, I believe it's like a 2% humic acid. Yeah, it contains 2% humic acids. Now humic acids um, can change the pH of your soil a little bit. And I believe they put that in here um, to just adjust the pH of the soil a little bit for acidic loving plants. Um, but I've had good luck with this particular one, but this year I also wanted to try another brand. So I bought a 50 pound bag of Espoma Plant Tone and um, I purchased that. Now I only have here a one gallon bag that I put some in here. Um, but whereas this is a um, 452 with 2% humic acid and some other things in it, this particular one I believe is a 533. And in addition, when I looked it up, this particular one has 1% humic acid. So it still has a humic acid to adjust the pH just a little bit, but it's not quite as much. So I'm interested to see um, if this performs even better than this particular uh, fertilizer. So I'll definitely, I'll definitely report back on that. Um, I have a number of maples that I used this on this year. And if I see any issues, sometimes you need to make sure that you add a little iron to your soil. I've also used this in the past, this Espoma Organics um, Iron Tone. And I will link to Espoma products down below because they are available on Amazon if you'd like to check those out. Now, if you don't want to use one of these products that I have here, if these aren't available to you or you want to use something different, make sure that you use a very slow release fertilizer. Something that is not going to instantly dump a bunch of nitrogen into that soil. Something that you'd use in the veggie garden or on your flowers or something like that, that's not going to be good. That's generally like a fast release. You don't want to use liquid fertilizers, etc., things like that on your Japanese maples. You might kill the tree. Um, too much nitrogen will not be good for your tree. So you want something that releases the nitrogen slowly. These organic products here release nitrogen slowly into the plant. And so these are good and safe to use. Um, there are other slow release fertilizer options that you can use as well, but this is what I've um, used and had um, good luck with. Now, when it comes to timing for that, I recommend that for most people, you pretty much fertilize um, shortly after the last frost of your season. Um, so for some areas that's earlier than others, but really pre pretty much look at something like Farmer's Almanac, something like that. Look at your last frost date um, and fertilize your Japanese maple tree um, after that date. That might be sometime in April um, in your area, that might be somewhere in May, or you may live in an area where you don't really get much frost. Um, but either way, somewhere um, late spring, really, really early into the summer, that's going to be a pretty good time um, to go ahead and fertilize your Japanese maple tree. Follow, of course, the directions on the package based on your pot size, that's always a smart idea. Um, and then water in the fertilizer after you fertilize that tree. I've already fertilized my trees this year, so I don't need to add any more. Um, but that's the basics there. Only fertilizing once a year is generally okay for Japanese maples. You possibly could um, fertilize again, like in July, um, with a light dose if you wanted to, but probably it's not necessary in most cases, as long as you're um, putting a good potting soil in there. And for the older trees that you're um, occasionally going in and doing some root pruning and changing out that soil to give it good fresh um, um, soil in there, then you're probably not going to have to fertilize but once a year with a good slow release fertilizer. Something like this is what I would um, look at in general. Okay, let's talk about the really important topic of location. Where should you locate your Japanese maples? In general, now there are some particular cultivars that can do better in sun than others. For instance, Bloodgood is a variety um, that commonly can take some pretty good sun. And I've seen several other varieties that specifically, if you look at a good nursery that grows them and sells them, they can tell you which ones do better in direct sun. But in general, most Japanese maples do better if you protect them from the hot afternoon sun. Otherwise, you get a little bit of burning on the leaves. There are several ways you can do this. Um, for bigger trees, you want to locate that pot somewhere where it's somewhat shady and when it gets really hot in the afternoon. Um, I have a spot in my yard here where this time of day, you can see that it's quite shady, uh, but it does get some sun. Uh, for several hours a day in this spot, but it protects it from some of the hottest late afternoon sun and it keeps these leaves beautiful. Japanese maples like um, to have filtered light and they like to be protected. Generally speaking, once again, there are exceptions, but generally speaking, it's best to protect them from the late 
um, afternoon sun that gets really hot. And that can be more important based on what zone you're in. I'm in a zone eight, and that's especially important here. Um, I still might get a little bit of uh, burning on leaves even in this spot later on in the season, but my trees have done pretty well here overall. Okay, when it comes to small Japanese maple trees, this is maybe even more important um, because a small Japanese maple tree can be damaged by sun much quicker and could maybe even kill it if it got too much sun in really direct hot sun. Um, it might even kill the tree. Um, but what you can do is you can set up something like I have here. I have a bench and there's a different ways you can go about this, but I have a bench that I built. And above this, I have some shade cloth. I believe it's something like a 40 or 50%, I can't remember, um, but I have shade cloth over this. Now at the moment, I have this clamped um, to the bench and it has some overhang, but I recently switched for this particular one, I just built um, a small little canopy above it. And um, what I did for this one is I used wiggle wire track to go ahead and um, very cleanly attach the shade cloth to that. So you can see how much cleaner that looks. And I'm going to be transitioning um, my shade cloth areas to this wiggle wire look. And if you're interested in seeing um, how I do that and how wiggle wire works, if you're not familiar with that, it's used on greenhouses quite a bit. But if you're not familiar with that, I can show you that in a video. Do let me know if you're interested in that in the comments section below. Um, but you can see just how much cleaner that looks as opposed to something like this, where it's just clamped to this um, and it's not as clean as when you do it with this particular wiggle wire and channel. Um, so much better, I believe, something like that. But um, these are getting shade now, but you can see they're under the shade cloth and it's especially important uh, for these smaller trees. And um, once again, when they are brand new, like these are the ones I potted up this spring, uh, really direct hot sun would shrivel these up and kill them. So that's really important. Another option you might look at is underneath um, maybe a big tree that you have. I have a large green maple in my yard. These get good morning sun and then they get afternoon shade. Uh, the big canopy of this big green maple above it gives it uh, the afternoon shade. And I've had good luck growing trees right here underneath this tree. And so that's another good option for you to grow Japanese maples under a larger tree. Um, it's good if they get some sun, um, you know, filtered light is okay. Like you see here, we're getting some filtered light through here. Um, and um, getting morning sun would be ideal. If there's a spot in your yard where you have a big tree that gets, gives afternoon shade, that might be a good place to put your Japanese maples. And, and this is a great example where putting them in pots is good because I don't have to disturb and dig and fight with the root system of this big maple tree, um, which could outcompete this smaller tree. Um, and I can actually still have these trees here and have the beautiful color out for me to look at. Okay, let's talk a little bit about pruning. Um, generally speaking, I'm going to do um, most of my pruning, if it's heavy pruning, which I don't often need to do, but if it's heavy pruning, I'm going to do that when the tree is dormant. That's going to be ideal. Japanese maples, thankfully, can be pruned most of the year. Um, but if you're going to do heavy pruning, I would definitely wait till the tree is dormant. You obviously want to come in and take away any dead um, tree branches like this and that's going to be obviously one that you want to take off so I'll go ahead and take that um, and um, you'll probably want to take off any branches below a certain point if there's a certain point in the tree where you like um, want only want to have branches you might take those off like for example down here those obviously don't need to be there I don't want branches growing out there so I can prune those off and uh, go ahead and get rid of those Okay, another really important tip when it comes to pruning trees, and Japanese maples included obviously here, is when you do trim off a branch, and I'm going to leave this branch because I like this branch here, but I thought this would be a good example, a good clear example. You can see here that you don't want to prune like right up flush with this main branch. Um, you want to actually give it just a little room um, and allow this collar to stay because the plant will actually protect itself from losing moisture, sap, etc., and protect itself by kind of blocking off that area at the collar. It's kind of like a gate that it can shut 
um, for the tree, I think maybe is a good simple way to think about it. But you don't want to prune too close to the tree because that can allow diseases and stuff into the tree. So if I were going to prune that, I would prune that right around there. Once again, um, a little bit over from that, at least maybe a quarter inch from that and not cut too close and allow that natural protection to go in. Um, but there are just a number of dead ones that I can come in here and take. It's normal to have a, a decent amount of dead like this, these little small ones, um, and the understory of your tree because the tree knows that these are not collecting sunlight. They're not beneficial for the tree. And so a lot of times a tree will have these dead things because it's not contributing to the tree and the tree wants to send all that, uh, those nutrients and the water and the sap and stuff to the branches that are actually helping the plant. So it's completely normal to come through and do that. Otherwise, you just need to generally shape the tree like you want it. Um, a lot of times that means clearing out any of the interior growth. Like you could prune off this branch because it's just here in the middle. I'll leave it for now because I'm going to be doing cuttings and grafting. And so um, I like to save the good healthy branches that I look at and say, okay, I need to prune that off. I like to wait until I can use that as a scion or as a cutting to try to root that because there's no need um, to waste a good cutting like that. Well, I hope everything that I've covered today was helpful for you. And um, whether your experience, somewhat experience with Japanese maples, I believe everyone has something that they can teach us. And hopefully, even if you have some experience, you learned something. Uh, but maybe you're new to Japanese maples, and hopefully this was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments section down below if that's the case, whether you're experienced or less experienced. And in addition, if you do have some experience and some success with successfully growing Japanese maples in pots, um, please share your tips down below. Maybe there's something that you do that is different from what I talked about in this video. Please share your best practices because obviously I would like to learn from others as well, but I believe that can help a lot of other people um, that read those comments in the future. Well, thank you so much. Until next time.